What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Summer Career Mode. This is episode number 33 and we're starting this episode on the back of our win against Fiorentina. We're stumbling a little bit in this area. I'm not going to lie, our form has been really, really inconsistent. We had the loss to RB Leipzig in the second leg of our Champions League last 16 tie that still made it through on the back of our win in Leipzig itself by two goals to nil. We had the 2-2 draw against Monza. We only just escaped against Lazio as well. I've, I've been struggling a little bit for form, no doubt about that. I guess I can defend myself a little bit here. I am recovering from major surgery, so I think I can give myself a little bit of, uh, of defense, if you will. But it is true, I've not been at my best recently, and I definitely need to pick it up. We are to win this Serie A back-to-back -back and hold off into Milano, who are breathing down our necks just the three points behind. So, yeah, heading into the first game of today's episode, uh, taking on Bologna here away from home, looking for back-to-back -back wins here to keep keep into at bay the four horse race has definitely become a two horse race now i would say it was a it was a great race because we, we kind of we kind of took our foot off the gas pedal and if i'm being honest i kind of bottled my form completely and that sort of title race get blown wide open at one point we were 10 points clear and it looks as though we were going to pull away a la last season but instead we've been caught up by milano and juve and of course inter as well now juve and milan they've both fallen off the pace so it's just us and inter in this two horse race in the final few games in the Serie A. The question is, can we hold them off? Can we stay on top position despite the fact we have been choking a little bit recently? Well, first game, Bologna. First off, was one of those games where you just wanted to throw your controller out the window. And then I remembered when you got one controller, so I had to quickly go and retrieve it and hope it's not broken in order to keep on playing. Because I didn't post twice and I still couldn't find a breakthrough. Thankfully, I did in the second half. My dynamic duo up top getting the goals, Colombo and Mbolo. And also Bologna did get one back. We held on for the 2 1 win. So just about held on for the three points there. And you'll see what that means to the table as I enter April. Well, eight games to go. The gap is free. I mean, listen, you could, you could say Juve and Milano could catch up. Juve nine points behind, Milan seven. But really, I think it's unlikely from here on out. I think because it's only eight games to go, I still think it's a two-horse race. Put it this way, if Milan and Juve are going to get back in it, they need to win their remaining eight and require slip-ups from us and Inter as well. And so with the second game, heading into this one here, on the back of the big win against Bologna, looking for three straight here against Milano. If we would win this game, that would do it. There's no way Milan are getting back in the title race. We go 10 points clear, seven games to go, and that would surely do it. Heading into the game, back to back wins, desperate for my third straight, which I haven't had for a few games now, and we took the lead early through Destiny Udogi, nodding in at the back post to make it 1 0, and in 27 minutes in, how did this ball stay out? There's a lot of talk about who's the best goalkeeper in, uh, in FIFA 23. For me, it's a tough one, but I'd probably say Mike. The Milan goalkeeper, absolutely amazing shot stopper. He's incredible and he's so hard to beat when he's on his day. Made an amazing save there. Kept it at 1-0. Thankfully, we did beat him for the second time not long afterwards. Six minutes to go in the first half. And Renato Sanchez, who I bought in on deadline day in the summer window. If you remember, he was my third option. I didn't want him initially, but he was my third option. He is one of my favorite players in FIFA, but I wanted someone else. But instead... I've got to say, talk about a blessing in disguise, man, because this, this guy's been unbelievable for me this year, banging in our second goal to make it two. Right before the break, Milan would get back in the game, though. Rafael Leal on the stroke of half-time makes it 2-1. I was thinking, oh, God, here we go. Here we go. We chucked away so many points from winning positions this season. Surely not again. Well, 10 minutes to go. Rodrigo de Paul, the interception, finds Palacios and a drilled effort past Aldero, levels it as Milan battle back from two goals to make it 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to say this right now. Now, if I bottle this title, this will probably be even worse than two years ago when we only needed to win two of our final three and only managed one. And the games we had were more than winnable, no doubt about that. Yeah, I'm going to say this right now. This will be an even worse bottle job than two years ago because from being 10 points clear, we dropped so many points in the second half of the season and from leading positions to tune it up and only managing a point at home that is embarrassing and a lifeline for milan juve and crucially inter as well speaking of the old lady second game so third game of today's episode here away turin champions league quarterfinal all italian affair i 
bloody love all same country European knockout ties. Aren't they great? Like, seriously, aren't they so great? You can think of some classics over the years. You can think of some brilliant El Clasicos, no doubt about that. Even, like, finals, like Champions League finals, for example. Dortmund versus Bayern were so dramatic going back about a decade ago now. At Wembley, if you remember Ryan Robin getting the last laugh, winning it late on against Subotic. That was an amazing moment there. Uh, obviously, you know, you think about the Real Madrid and the Fletica Madrid finals as well. But just in general, like, European ties, which are... The same nations competing in the game. So just so class. I really, really enjoyed them. So really, really dramatic. I think Liverpool Chelsea, one of my all time favourites as well. A few years ago, Man City versus Spurs, Champions League. Was that quarter final? Semi uh, quarter final, wasn't it? Because Spurs had uh, Ajax in the semis. You know, brilliant, brilliant ties. They're so fun to play. This one, no exception. Fell behind through Vlahovic. Got back on the little turns through. A rare goal score in Hans Hatterborough. And it was 16 minutes to go. Almost won it. Briel and Bolo going through one on one. Could only hit the post. I swear, man, this season I have hit the woodwork more than any other season in the save. It's incredible, man. You saw me hit the woodwork twice against Bologna in the first half. Almost won it late on there through Briel and Bolo. Sadly, the woodwork rattled and Juve escape tied at 1-1 heading into the second leg. So, yeah, so frustrating I couldn't win that one there as it ends a 1-1 draw. But going back to the second leg, we know, get a goal and keep a clean sheet and we are going through to the Champions League semi-final. So, yeah, following game, uh, back home for this one, taking on Parma, a bit of Parma drama for this one here. Shout out to my good friend Ben, uh, Dr. Ben GFM, the GOAT of Football Manager videos. Taking on Parma here at home, aiming for a bit more of a, a comfortable win, if you will, on the back of the back-to-back -back draws against Juve and Milan. Well, we did take the lead through Briel and Bolo, and there were 13 minutes to go. Got a little bit lucky there. I've been, I've been quite unlucky this season, if I don't say so myself, but got a little bit lucky there. Big deflections, the ball's whipped into the middle. It literally drops right into the path of Bolo coming in, and with 13 minutes to go. Just convert from close range and that would do it. 2-0 to final score, which means we remain top for now. Question is, can we keep our double dreams alive? Following game, second leg, Como versus Juve, the Stadio Giuseppe, Sinagaglia heading into this game. Tied at 1-1 from the first leg and desperately needed to keep our bottle, something I haven't done well at this season, or really throughout the save as a whole. Heading into the game, worst possible start. I said keep a clean sheet and get a goal. We're going through. Four minutes in, we fell behind. Scored in the first leg, scores in the second. One of the complete strikers in FIFA, even if he's not as good as Juve were hoping when they signed him from Fiorentina, but it's the Serbian tank, Vlahovic, who I just can't stop in this game. One of the toughest strikers I have to face in FIFA. No doubt about it. It makes it 1-0, but we'd find our level at not long afterwards. 15 minutes to go before the break. Christian Volpato gets the goal. Put us back on level terms, it's 1-1. I knew the game was not done there. It might have finished 1-1 in Turin, but I knew there were more goals tonight. And on the stroke of half-time, a chance to get in front, which we would do. Volpato turning into prime KDB in this first half. Finishing a chance himself. Great awareness, great vision, amazing technique. And after scoring the first, he sets up the second. Romeo Lavia heads in from close range to make it 2-1. We're in front for the first time on the night and in the tie. The question is, could we Hold on. We're 70 minutes in. What a save this was by Emmy or Derek. Yeah, remember in the last episode, you got that absolute clanger against Salerno Tanner, I think it was. Or Derek was one of those goalkeepers who every now and then he'll just let a goal go in and I'll think, are you serious, bro? How did that go in? But then sometimes he bails me out with an amazing stop. Unfortunately, it came in vain. From the following corner, directly from the set piece, ball works into the middle, and Matthias De Litt finishes like a striker. 2-2, and we're back on level terms in one of the most topsy-turvy European knockout ties you will see. And for a kickoff, I was thinking, right, I am not letting this go to extra time, because if it does, I know we're not going to make it through. So Destiny Udogi says, boss, give me the ball, let me run down his left-hand side. He's chipped him with a few goals this season, and he's now chipped to possibly his most important. Quick little one-two, ball over the top, Udogi runs through, drills it in far corner. Como, back in front, it's 3-2 in such a topsy-turvy tie. And with basically the final attack of the game, Emi Ordero coming up clutch, makes this amazing save on the one-on-one -on -one and ensures that we hold on by the skin of our teeth 
to make it through to the semi-finals. A brilliant tie, amazing, amazing knockout European tie. I said all same nation ties are normally so fun to play. This one, no exception. Final score, 3-2 on the night, 4-3 over two legs. Such a topsy-turvy tie, but what a fun tie it was. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Those are the ties that I much prefer than the dominant one side of the first. What a game. Absolutely amazing. And we are through by the skin of our teeth to the Champions League semi-finals as our league and European double remains alive for now. And in the semis of the Champions League, Como going to new territory. The Italian Minnows now turning into Giants will be taking on in the final four. Borussia Dortmund. Yep, Dortmund in the semis. PSG versus Real Madrid, a blockbuster tie in that semi-final. I've got to be honest here. With no disrespect, Dortmund certainly won't be an easy side to face, no doubt about it. You know when you go to the Signal Iduna Park and you face that big yellow wall, 82,000 fans inside that iconic old ground, it's going to be very, very tense indeed for any visiting team, but... I'm looking forward to it because I think if we would have drawn PSG or Real Madrid over two legs, couldn't see us going through. We got knocked out by Barca last season. Another Spanish giant in Real Madrid. The team that's won it more times than anyone else. Yeah, I don't think we'll make it through them. PSG, eh, again, over two legs, maybe. But not too sure if I'm being totally honest there with them. Desperate for their first CL in history. But for Dortmund, that was the team I kind of wanted with no disrespect. It's the team I've got. The question is now, can we capitalise on the draw? Which I would say is a very, very even tie. Como versus Dortmund Champions League semi. So, yeah, following game, aim to make it back-to-back -back wins here and get another big three points in our pursuit of... That back-to-back -back Serie A title, Sassuolo away. And for the first time in a while, we had a very comfortable victory. 3-0, the final score. One of those games where I felt like I was in control for the most part. And I haven't had many of them, for being totally honest here, in this second half of the season. But this one, I definitely did. Comfortable 3-0 win away against Sassuolo. Lorenzo with the first two, and then Bolo with the third. Final score, 3-0. Whilst we did have to slip up to AC Milan, we do remain top of the table with Inter behind still by three. I'll say it before and I'll say it again. It's a two-horse race, five games to go, us versus Inter. A straight shootout, I would say, as we hold a three-point lead with five games to go. The question is, can we hold our bottle and win the Serie A back, back and make that Champions League final? We'll find out in the next episode. Guys, thank you for watching. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Summer Career Mode very soon.